This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Good morning everyone. So today is going to be our last day here in Lebanon. Right now we're here in Biblos where we've been staying the last few days and it's also where we made the, our last video here in Biblos. And today we're going to be exploring some other regions kind of around here. So we're going to be heading to a waterfall that I think is called Balu Bala, kind of a weird name. And then we're going to be heading to another little city up the coast called Batroum. So there is no Uber here, so we had to negotiate with a taxi driver. The first one that we spoke with yesterday charged $100, and that was to the two locations, but we thought that was a bit high. And then we found another one that's going to charge $80, but he's also going to take us back to the Beirut airport for $80. So yeah, that's way more stuff included and a lot cheaper too. So yeah, we're gonna be doing the trip for $80 and we're gonna head out right now. So the driver stopped quickly on the way for us to take some pictures and film and look at this it's crazy like some huge mountainous area loads of valleys so the ocean is that way didn't really realize we were coming so high yeah really I mean, cool up here yeah it's a very cool wind and it just keeps getting higher and higher yeah constantly going up yeah there are a lot of mountains around here yeah this is what surprised us about uh, Lebanon really we didn't realize it was so green so we've stopped yet again, this time for a waterfall down here. So this water is coming from the same waterfall that we're about to visit. Pretty big waterfall as well, isn't it? Yeah, and it's crazy because there is uh, snow. Yeah, that, uh, the mountain. snow back there. And it's cold here. We didn't come prepared for this. No. We thought it was going to be warm. Yeah, that's a pretty nice waterfall though. Right on the side of the highway. And around here it's like more rocky. So it's kind of like rocks and trees. Already changed quite a bit the landscape. So we've arrived now. Probably took about an hour maybe overall. Yeah, yeah, a little bit less, I think. Yeah, maybe. And uh, yeah, it's still cold at this part. We start we start going down the mountain a bit, so I thought it'd warm up, but it kind of feels the same. So it's actually good that we gotta do a bit of walking. <laughs> maybe it'll warm up. Yeah, because we read the reviews and nobody mentioned anything about the no, temperature, right? And I was even checking the like the pictures of other people that were here, and they were wearing like shorts and t-shirts. I, I don't know, maybe it's just today that it's, it's cold like this. But we saw so many places with uh, snow and ice spots, like not the big places, but but I don't know, it just, it just seems to be a very cold place, <laughs> but uh, not sure. <laughs> yeah, so that was super quick. That's another thing as well in the reviews, people were completely over-exaggerating. They were saying it was like a tough hike and stuff. It's like absolutely nothing. Just this part here. This is where the zip line is. <laughs> See the wires here. And yeah, you go down here. And there's the waterfall. Are we in Iceland? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a place in Iceland, doesn't it? Yeah. Where we went recently. Wow. This could easily be like Iceland in the summer. Wow, look at that. Man, that is one of the coolest waterfalls we've ever seen. There's like this bridge here. I think you can cross it. Water going through the middle. Whoa, look at that. Ah, so there's actually no water down here, it doesn't seem. I wonder where that water goes then. Maybe it goes that way. I thought it was going to come out here. Doesn't seem to be though. Wow, that's beautiful though. Completely different kind of waterfall. Oh, 
All right, so here is the close-up view of the waterfall. Then this barrier here, so I guess we can't pass. Probably in the past, people would walk all the way behind there. Can't really tell how deep it goes. Can't see from here. I wonder where the water goes though, because we thought it came out here, didn't we? Yeah. But it doesn't at all. No, it goes to underground or something. Yeah. I mean, I can kind of see like a little cave there. Maybe it goes that way. That's crazy. Pretty cool though, like within an hour, you can go from sunny warm beaches to cold mountains with beautiful waterfalls here in Lebanon. So this is the best viewpoint of the mall, right at the back. So here you can see the whole thing. There's actually a hole at the bottom as well. So there's like almost like two bridges, one here and one there. There's actually a path with a rope down there. You can see it, but I have no idea how you get down there. I'm not going to try going down there. I don't know if uh, people used to go down here, but yeah, it seems super dangerous. I'll just enjoy it from here instead. Yeah, we've seen a lot of waterfalls, but that's definitely one of the best. Yeah, it's crazy. I think I've never seen anything like that and yeah I just love all the, the different layers it's beautiful <laughs> be way better than what we, I was expecting yeah oh rain oh no T time to leave yeah it seems like it's gonna rain pretty hard soon the forecast does show a thunderstorm so time to get out here <laughs> man that is some ice cold rain Carol yeah I don't want to get wet so I don't know if there's some kind of shelter this is this is Carol's shelter here. <laughs> this is the, the spot right here. I convinced Chris to stay. <laughs> it, it's really cold rain though. Yeah. It's like yeah. ice drops. And I think the, the clouds are passing by very quick, so I really hope this rain won't last too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Check this guys, it's now hailstone. <laughs> hailstone up here. Man, that is some heavy hailstone. Yeah, I guess that can hurt. <laughs> yeah, that, that will hurt. Like big blocks. quick intermission to talk about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. So Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that you can use to create your own website. And two years ago, we used Squarespace to create our current website, jumpingplaces.com. The main thing that made us choose Squarespace to build our website is because they have pre-built layouts and customizable templates and with them we were able to quickly create our web pages. I didn't need to have any advanced computer skills in order to create our website with a professional look. Another hassle-free thing about Squarespace is that you can buy and register your custom domain through their website. Another thing that's been extremely useful for us is that you can link your social media accounts. For example, we're able to automatically push our posts from Instagram directly to our website. Click on the link in the video description, squarespace.com, to get a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash jumpingplaces and you will get 10% off on your purchase of your first website or domain. So we've now arrived in Batrum. Nice and sunny now, which we really wanted. Not a cloud in the sky here. I thought it was like a quieter place than Byblos, but there's way more cars and people around than Byblos. And the area that we're in right now seems uh, pretty modern, although that building looks historic and nice. But yeah, there are supposed to be some um, historic buildings around here that we're gonna check out as well. Seems really nice so far though. So we're gonna enter the market area, the souk, Check out this statue here, statue of sponge, sponge diver. This is basically like identical to Biblos. 
Yeah, but like you said, it's a bit more uh, busy and lively. Yeah, it seems like more local people live here. Yeah. But like the buildings are all kind of the same style, the same kind of rock, identical rock. So here we have the names of all the different tourist attractions. So I don't think we have like Roman ruins or anything here, but we do have some old church. Cathedral Saint Etienne, Saint Stephen Cathedral. Phoenician wall, I wanted to check that out. Phoenician fort, okay, so there is a fort here. Wow, that's a fancy building, isn't it? Yeah, maybe it's a hotel, but it looks very nice. Yeah, still using kind of like the old style, but modern. There's a church, see the dome. Wow, look at the architecture style of that one. That's probably the coolest church we've seen in uh, Lebanon so far. Yeah, it's really nice. So you have the beautiful old church, and then it's overlooking the, the fishing port here. That also looks really nice. Yeah, this one's less of a touristy port, isn't it? Yeah. I think. Mm, but I think I like this, this part better. You do? With the church. Yeah. You know what these places remind me of? So in the previous video I said like Greece or um, Italy, but they remind me a lot of Malta. I went to Malta without Carol uh, many years ago, and it's because Malta is all this color, this like sandy color, and it's a Mediterranean place, so really does remind me of Malta. We need to go to Malta, I absolutely yeah, loved it. I want to see it. Yeah, let's go, <laughs> definitely. Malta, coming soon. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe next year. So it's pretty much empty on the inside. Looks really cool on the inside as well though. Same style as it looked on the outside. Nice, isn't it? Yeah, I love the, the ceiling. It's just like the other um, constructions here, like the ceiling with the, the square rocks. Yeah. Rectangular. Rectangular square. Sounds like there's a school or something outside. Yeah, over there. <laughs> Noisy kids. place has a nice uh, seaside smell. Yeah. I didn't smell that in Beer Bluffs really. Maybe too windy. <laughs> yeah, right. Wow, that looks very inviting, doesn't it? Yeah. I want to jump. <laughs> yeah, so do I. There's a sign here saying no diving. Yeah, that really is like a nice little restaurant right there. And this is the Phoenician Wall. So this is one of the spots to see here. You can actually walk on it. There's a, there's a bridge here. The Tuk Tuk's. So this wall, the Phoenician wall, it was natural also, as you can see. From what I read, it's like uh, petrified sand dunes, I think. But the Phoenicians reinforced it. So they reinforced it because this was basically protection for the city back there from storms, yeah, big waves. And now you can see there's just a more uh, modern wall behind it here. But yeah, this is what would have protected them at the time. Huge wall. Nice, isn't it? Yeah, you can see that the water goes up to that part over there. Yeah, all the way back there. I guess when there are some storm big, or, or something. Big waves. Big waves, yeah. And I think you can walk all across the wall because there's a beach just there. One of the main beaches, public beaches here. So we might do that.
so you almost have like a big swimming pool here in the middle of the rocks natural swimming pool these, these buildings here have the nicest use especially that one there there's some like chairs there i don't know if that's a a hotel i don't know what these are here like this is something definitely man-made you can see here maybe a pool like somebody made a pool i don't know this as well i don't know what that is anyone have any ideas there's loads of them around here this too that's man-made ah carol i just realized what? i think that's the man-made one really? i think so Okay. <laughs> that makes sense because we were trying to work out what was man-made here. Yeah, so that's definitely the Phoenician wall. That's the man-made one. Pretty impressive how they made that. All right, on top of the Phoenician wall. Really, it's crazy how they made this. So look at that. That looks perfect. Keeping out this right here. Yeah, so these buildings on the front, it's hard to tell what they are. I mean, some of the rocks below look like old rocks. Then like reconstructed or something. Don't know if they're making hotels or something like that. So we found out what one of the buildings is. It's a church, yeah called lady of the sea or something this old looking church couldn't see that part on the top to know that it was a church cool spot to have a church like this yeah and it's uh, like a, a different uh, architecture because usually the church is just like one big building but this has like a balcony which is really nice yeah with these cool arches yeah, yeah here's what i said before was made up of petrified sand dunes primarily at the beginning of the fourth geological period around one million years ago so the sign on the door says that they don't know the exact date of this little chapel and it was built on top of a pagan church it really is tiny in here but like a golden chandelier some interesting paintings I wonder if I can go through here. Candle stole it. Oh, it's pretty dark in here. Some more paintings. So many of the houses down this area are more white, like the, the Greek houses. This is a bit of a mix actually. You have the other kind of rock here, and then white, and blue windows. Oh, this one's a bit colourful too. Oh, it doesn't look like there's much of a beach, is there? High tide, maybe? Uh, not sure. Yeah, I think it's high tide. Oh, this is the beach, I don't know. Tiny little beach. Even that looks like an old building, doesn't it? The arches. Yeah, it's all rocky as well. Yeah, it's a rocky beach. I think there are other better beaches that we can go to outside of town. Maybe we'll go to that instead. This area looks nice though, this lot way. Maybe we, we try to find a place to eat here. Yeah, could do. Maybe see the prices of these places here. Ah, uh, what a nice place to eat. So we couldn't resist after seeing this spot here, these restaurants, so we decided to eat at this one. And I got the fish and chips, which is 350,000. That's a different kind of dish there. Yeah, it's mac and cheese. Mac and cheese? Macaroni and cheese, yeah. Also Western. <laughs> yeah, they didn't have a... I don't think they had any uh, Lebanese option, just like international food. And this was 235,000 Lebanese pounds. Lebanese pounds, yeah. But what a spot. Beautiful spot to eat. There's actually quite a lot of uh, foreign tourists here, way more than Biblos as well. Especially this part we're in right now, we've seen loads.
So we've now come to a beach here. I think it was probably about five minutes away. We got a tuk-tuk. I think they call them tuksis here, like a tuk-tuk taxi. And that was uh, 40,000. And this beach is called White Beach, mainly because of the big white rocks. I, I don't even think you call these uh, pebbles, right? They're huge. But the entire beach is like that. So these big white stones. And this costs like 50 per person, right? 50,000. Yeah, including the sunburn, the umbrella that we're not gonna take because it's not so hot right now. And also towels. And they have a bar and... Shower as well. Yeah. Better than the other beach in uh, town though. Way bigger. Sea looks pretty rough though. <laughs> not sure we'll be doing much swimming in there. Probably just lie down here for the rest of the day. So this is the menu right here. Probably gonna get some alcoholic drinks. Glass of wine is like 60,000 or 70,000, not bad at all. And I think I'm gonna go for a, a beer, a local beer, Almaza beer, 30,000. Yeah, cause usually these kind of beach places just charge like Green way, way more, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really good here, uh -huh. not bad at all. So this is a Lebanese beer. Says proudly Lebanese since 1933. Re really nice beer. Uh, I've been drinking this quite a lot here since uh, we met up with the uh, other YouTuber and his friends, Life of George. We ended up going out with him the other night for the European semi final. Lots of people drinking, lots of people seem to be into football here. So, yeah, I had a bit too many Almazas. And what was that other drink that we had, the local one? Uh, Arak. Arak. Yeah, I think that's, that's how it's called. It's a very strong drink. It's, it has like a licorice taste. I didn't like it that much, but uh, I think it's just like the Brazilian cachaça. A uh, very strong alcohol and yeah, you just sip it. Down it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that's another thing that differentiates uh, Lebanon from the other Middle Eastern places that we've been to. Like you can openly drink alcohol here. I think even Dubai is way more strict than here and that's supposed to be pretty liberal, right? So yeah, anyway you go here you can get alcohol in the supermarkets and uh, Biblos and Bathroom, Biblos where we were in the previous video, they're very uh, popular for like partying and stuff. I think Bathroom is even more, I think there's lots of like clubs and stuff here. So we're back at our apartment now here in Biblos. We ended up getting a minivan here. So there's some minivans that pass on the main highway and that costs 20,000 per person. And then we decided to walk around the old historic center of Biblos and we got to enjoy a really nice sunset there. So really nice way to end our trip. And I haven't shown you the place that we're staying yet. So I'll give you a quick tour. This was around $67 a night. So right now I'm in the kitchen area, got a really big kitchen here and then through here also a huge living room it's really a big apartment it's like for a family pretty much so huge living room area here and then through here there's a small toilet and then over here is the main bathroom area and it's two bedrooms so this is one bedroom that we haven't used and this is the other one Carol's ready to get on the flight right now. I'm ready to sleep. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't mention, but we have a 4 a.m. flight and it's around what, 12 right now? Yeah, we need to go to the airport with no sleep and I'm like, uh, like a zombie. <laughs> Carol's very, very ready for the airport. Yeah, so we're heading to Athens in Greece next and that's where all the next videos will be coming from. We don't usually fly this late, but it's the only flight time that they have right now so yeah it's gonna be crazy because it's a 4 a.m. flight we arrive there at 6 a.m. and we can only check in at 2 p.m. so we're basically gonna not sleep at all during the night and then we're gonna arrive there and we're not gonna be able to sleep which doesn't happen very often so 
yeah that's not gonna be fun at all and that's it for this trip then so we've had a really amazing time it's really surprised us and as i mentioned earlier we just wish we had more time here since we've loved it so much. And it's just been interesting because obviously we knew that there was a lot of problems in Lebanon, but we had met people that spoke well about it, even traveling during this uh, big crisis. And you honestly don't notice it that much. Like these days in Byblos and Batroum, it just seems normal, like everywhere is busy. There's a lot of Lebanese people traveling. So some people do still have money. It's not like everyone's completely broke because pretty much everyone that we see is Lebanese. There is the issue with the money that I've mentioned in previous vlogs where the currency exchange is a bit crazy. The official one, if you use your card, so you can't use your card here, you only use uh, dollars or euros. But that's not really a big issue, you just bring the cash into the country and then exchange it and you're fine. For example, the lunch today, if we used our card, that would have been like $450. <laughs> so yeah, there's no way you can use your card here. I think for us, the only thing that affected us was probably the electricity. The government's not able to give everyone electricity for the entire day. I think it's only a few hours, so the majority of people here have to pay some like private companies or something to generate electricity for them but it's still not the entire day but it's not been a huge deal i think here from around 1 p.m until 12 at night we have power the whole way and then it cuts out during the night but it's cool during the night we don't really need it and then in the morning it like comes for an hour and then goes comes and goes so it's a bit like that so that would be the only like major turn off i think for a lot of tourists but Besides that, it's just like traveling to a normal country, I'd say. You really don't notice the problems. I think only if you lived here, you could really understand it and know what's going on. As a tourist, you won't really see or feel the issues that much. So definitely recommend coming here because yeah, it's just super underrated from what, what we've seen. And we've already been discussing if we should come back soon and kind of visit the other areas that we didn't get to see. So yeah, we might do, I have to just see. So if you like this video and the series from this country, just drop a like to support us. Subscribe if you like to see more videos like this one. Follow us on Instagram and we'll see you next time.